Dr. Ray, I wonder if you could uh, tell us a little bit about yourself. Uh, where did you come from? <laughs> uh, because most people don't know a whole lot about physics and uh, uh, haven't followed publications and stuff. And most people's eyes just kind of roll back in their head when you bring up the, the subject of physics anyway. Well, I sort of grew up in the field, um, really. Uh, I, my mother, when I was a small child, uh, my mother and father divorced at an exceptionally early age. And uh, my uh, mother was dating, uh, when I was a young child, uh, uh, the brother of a very, very famous uh, mathematician and physicist, uh, by the name of Shoshichi uh, Kobayashi uh, from Japan. And so it was somewhat uh, innate, somewhat inherent in my family. I was born into it. Uh, insofar as uh, my uh, educational uh, experiences, I was a Kincaid scholar uh, with uh, Jaworski, Fulbright, and... Um, of course, uh, G.E. Westinghouse and a few other uh, scholarships uh, at an early age. Uh, later on, uh, I found out that uh, I was just a little bit too immature to be in academia, and so I withdrew for a few years and more or less uh, found myself uh, uh, as soon as my so-called hormones stabilized later and I developed a little bit of uh, sanity, so to speak in the, uh, in the uh, post-pubescent days, and I um, began uh, to set myself into study. I've always had a love of mathematics, a love of physics, and uh, I've always wanted to uh, study this. I've always had a uh, very, very, very strong interest in, in, in languages, uh, in, the, in the Word of God, uh, where it came from, why it was... Uh, why it was beset so mysteriously upon us, and, and what, 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 were its, what were its hidden meanings, if there be any hidden meanings, and what was it trying to tell us? And, of course, these questions I've never answered. Uh, anyway, I uh, attended the university, as uh, did most people, uh, and uh, I obtained a couple of doctorates, uh, then on with the DSCs, the professoriates, and all that. Um, over the course of my uh, over the course of my uh, uh, study, I found myself I was, I was dyslexic, and so I tried to avoid any course with an intensive amount of reading. As a result, I ended up with so many equivalents of minors and so many equivalents of majors that. Uh, uh, the equivalence of deans of academic affairs came after me with a pension uh, because of the paperwork I was causing them. And uh, they were quite angry with me because I, I had affected, in my fear of reading uh, from dyslexia, I had affected vast interests, uh, interests that took me into uh, economics in an expertise, in political science as an expertise, uh, in chemistry as an expertise, in, in electrical and uh, structural and civil engineering as an expertise. These are areas in which I, I've worked and earned a living uh, when, 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 uh, when, when, during the summer months when, when academic uh, uh, profit is not available, so to speak. And along the way, I pick up the uh, Russell Medal, the uh, Quine Medal, the uh, Wittgenstein Award, and um, uh, the Einstein Bergman Medal, uh, and and these were these were given me really by God, because I don't know how I came up with the ideas to uh, to do this type of work, and I cannot take proper credit. So, and I even have uh, the Homer Award in poetry. And how I got that one, I have no idea, but the uh, title of my poem was Questions. And uh, it uh, apparently was uh, sufficiently moving to uh, get me uh, that that award, and I, that one was completely unexpected. I, I have never been rewarded when I have tried to edify myself 
I have always been rewarded when, unexpectedly so, when I've tried to edify God. And so there, there is no room for me to take credit. Um, and to give you one perfect example, I, I've been, since 1976, I've been on presidential advisory staff. And this uh, is a voluntary, uh, it's, 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 it's more or less an appointment that's not White House staff and proper. Uh, it, it, we're not the people who are in the situation rooms of the White House, as, as we see on television and the spy movies. We're the citizens of various nations who've had certain ideas that seem to answer certain questions at a certain time when an answer was well needed. And, and, and so these, these individuals, uh, if they provide consistently uh, some, some answers, um, are given this 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 uh, I wouldn't call it a station, but a but a privilege, and it's nothing other than the privilege of any human being in the United States of America, and that is to submit something to a president uh, as an idea, or to Congress as an idea, and of course it may end up in the garbage, and probably probably shall, but nevertheless it's 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 a very moving moment, and it makes an individual take seriously his civic duty. Uh, he, he has a, once this is bestowed, it, 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 uh, it really moves one uh, to respect his country. The reason why I say I cannot take credit for this, and let me, let me go into the reason why, is because I went to school with the family of George Herbert Walker Bush, and I played in their yard as a, uh, as a young child and all the way into my teen years. And so I knew the entire Bush family. I knew the, the Johnson family as well. Uh, for similar reasons, they attended our school. Uh, their children did, rather. And uh, which gives away my age, knowing the ages of, uh, of some of these presidents. I think, I think you may, 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 may know how old I really am. And <laughs> so anyway... We were a very, very, very interesting group because I was a poor kid in a rich neighborhood, an extremely rich school, which at that time required $30,000 of scholarship money in order to attend that school per, some, per, per quarter, really. Uh, and, and this was an incredible amount of money, considering that for $30,000, one could send a child to to MIT, Princeton, Harvard, Yale, uh, for a four-year period, not just one-fourth a year, but a four-year period, 16 times that. So this will give you an idea of the exclusiveness of the school, the amount of priority placed on education, the amount of torture to which we were subjected, and why I was actually dyslexic. Uh, that was a horrible fear for me. The reading of any kind were absolutely perilous experiences. And so having known the Bush family, I was not surprised when interim DCI, interim director of Central Intelligence Agency, director uh, George Herbert Walker Bush, Senator George Herbert Walker Bush, uh, nominated me for presidential advisory staff. Now, how could I take credit for that when I knew the family? And this was more or less a friendly gesture. And so my first, my first task was to work on a few problems with a Soviet economist uh, for President Gerald R. Ford, sadly, uh, after the Watergate era. This was also about the time I began my really heavyweight work in physics with, and this again was God-given. This is something that was Julene, given by God. Uh, nothing I earned, uh, because I began working with uh, Evgeny Mikhailovich Lifshitz, uh, one of the one of the foremost uh, uh, physicists of, uh, of in history, uh, and and uh, I mean that's that's the general consensus of the physical community. Uh, his father, Professor uh, uh, Lev Davidovich Landau, uh, gave us supercooling, superconductivity, uh, the liquid. Uh, the, the, 
the, the, the Fermi condensates uh, liquid hydrogen, uh, the, the Bose condensates the liquid helium and on. And so we have an incredible dynasty of people. And I found out these, these individuals were very, 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 very approachable. They were very easy to talk to as long as one had two priorities, interest and respect. Uh, these were two very important priorities. Uh, and also, my father professors had been some of the top minds in history as well. This, too, was fortunate, because how, how this, this, too, was orchestrated by God, because let me explain something. To find one incredibly famous, historically famous mathematician at any university is, in and of itself, an act of God. Not an act of man, but an act of God. To go further, to find seven at one university is something that I would have to call equally miraculous. And to actually to, to find myself in a position where I was I was I was able to to express to these gentlemen actually not only my gratitude for their teaching, their research work, their their accomplishments, but also a, a strict interest in and respect for not only them as human beings, but also their fields of research work. And many of them had crossed over into multiple areas of research work. And, and I mean, many, many, many areas. And I was taught we cannot specialize. If you like ring theory, then you had best know commutative algebra. And if you know commutative algebra, algebraic geometry. And if you know algebraic geometry, you better know differential geometry, differential topology, algebraic topology, and the rest of the mathematics it takes, and the rest of mathematics. And if you know a little bit about structural physics, you better know about nuclear physics and blah, blah, blah. So it grew, it grew, it grew, and it mushroomed. And I had the, I had the fortunate task of being at a university where these gentlemen were present. And I was absolutely flabbergasted. I kept asking myself, what happened? What happened? Because uh, roughly 1970, Five, I began work with uh, Lipschitz, and uh, uh, here we began. I, well, first of all, let me tell you something humorous. I'm known as a guy who sort of screwed up Nightline for uh, a, a year uh, at the ABC news program Nightline, uh, owing to the fact that uh, results predicted. Uh, by some very interesting mathematics, uh, work that followed my work with uh, Lipschitz uh, actually was verified by the Hubble telescope and other exploratory uh, high-energy astrophysical probes. Uh, and for one year, every night, we were seeing new pictures of stars and stellar formations. This was, of course, uh, 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 my work uh, on uh, alternate cosmologies, uh, followed in 1977, uh, uh, when uh, I, I had uh, given a reasonable argument uh, in a response to a paper written by uh, uh, Stephen Weinberg that uh, the speed of light must vary if his electroweak arguments are to hold. And an article he actually published in the, uh, the uh, renowned Bulletin of the Atomic Scientist. Uh, he quoted he quoted a uh, a little bit of my uh, the, the excerpts of my argument uh, the highlights and uh, uh, with with my permission he he quoted me in that uh, particular argument. I went on to point out that that implied the variability of Planck's constant, the universal gravitational constant, uh, the neutron and proton and pion masses, and uh, and some of our some of our more sacred constants. In 1983, uh, uh, there was a uh, there was a 
great deal of work that uh, was seen all the way from 1998 to approximately 2008 uh, on the Discovery, ABC, NBC, and PBS uh, in documentary form. Uh, it's all been verified by the University of Tokyo, uh, the University of Moscow, and NASA. Uh, and then, in, in a weird turn of events, I got into medicine as well and developed a field known as neurophysics. And neurophysics is exactly that. And uh, that is an oddity unto itself. I'd always had an interest in biomathematics, but unfortunately neurophysics was something uh, into which uh, I had never before delved. And when I did, I found out uh, something very unusual, that we have neither a left nor right hemisphere, that these two guys are interchanging roles constantly with a particular resonant frequency, particular or peculiar to each human being. And uh, this in and of itself was uh, rather strange, and I was beginning to wonder, what, I'm, what am I doing here? Why am I here? <laughs> How did I get, in, get into this field? Of, and why, why did I call it neurophysics? It seemed natural, but I know now that really what, what was happening was uh, I was listening to what God was telling me. It's the physics of uh, neurological uh, uh, phenomena. Later on, and this is probably my most bizarre, uh, I, I'm recorded, uh, this is on record, I'm one of the guys, uh, many people have heard of the buckyball, uh, the carbon-60, the geodetic carbon um, molecule, C60. And uh, I'm one of the guys who found that baby and who helped find that baby. And uh, there, I don't know how many people were in on the finding of that that guy, but unfortunately I got sucked in, and the only reason I got sucked in is because I didn't know how to say no. And that was approximately 1989, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, so anyway, here I am, working in algebraic geometry, mathematical logic, uh, set theory, uh, relativistic quark nuclear physics, and buckyballs? And I'm going, wait a minute, huh? This does not make sense. Uh, and by this time, I had chaired divisions of academies of sciences. And I'm going, wait a minute. What lunatic put me in charge of an, a division of a, you know, do these, you know, after, after, I, after I was overcome by flattery, I, 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 I returned to my senses and I said, whoa. I signed on the dotted line that yes, I would, and I don't know. I don't know one thing about chairing a department, let alone an entire division of academy. You've got to be kidding me! This, is, this cannot be happening. And I said yes. Uh, and you talk about something that shall uh, beget prayer. When a person does not know what he is to do next especially when it involves human lives, trust me, that person shall be praying to God several times a second, a microsecond, a picosecond. I'll go you one further. Um, if one could pray continuously, that would be done. Uh, unfortunately, humans are finite. So by this time I had shared not only in the U.S., but in, in nearly every other country, and I'm going, what in the world is wrong with these people? I have no qualifications to cheer. Uh, I, I'm, I, I could only see, I could see only my irresponsibility, my frivolity, how many times I had been disrespectful as a child or, 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 or acted foolishly uh, while in, in upper school or lower school as as as, as a youngster i i could not see myself as uh, as uh, as other sami and perhaps that 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 is an appropriate way for us to behave i don't know i do know this much that it brought me to a point in my life where after so many scientific accolades I wanted to go back in all seriousness and say, wait a minute, there's a point in my youth where I had a great deal of res 
respect for and love of God, I need to go back to that point. How can I get there, and what has all this meant? Because if it has brought me only this far for one reason, and that's recognition, then it is worth nothing. So I began looking for meaning in mathematics, in physics. What was God trying to tell me? And I went back and I began reading the Bible. And I began reconsidering the Word of God, this time in a way where I listened to what God was telling me. Not where I tried to seek something magically from God, but where I tried to allow God to explain to me, as best I could understand, what he meant for me and for me alone. It had to be meaningful to me before I could be a meaningful person to others. And I believe that is the ultimate answer to any question.